Hi there everyone and welcome to this video. Uh, what we're going to cover in this video is basically um, the quote to cash process on the sales ledger in um, Business Central. Okay, so we're going to go right from uh, the start, which is uh, usually the sales quote uh, in, uh, in BC uh, through to a sales order, through to a sales invoice, um, and then we'll go ahead and pay that sales invoice. Okay, so I guess this is just to give uh, an understanding of how the quote to cash um, process works on the sales ledger in um, Business Central. And we may do sort of other videos which go a little bit more in depth um, in uh, each of these individual processes, but um, this video is, uh, I guess, to cover uh, the process end to end on our sales ledger. Okay, so what I'm going to do to begin with here is I'm going to come into my sales quotes and um, just bear in mind uh, as a business process, you may not do sales quotes uh, or you may do sales quotes and you may do you may not do them on Business Central, right? So it depends on um, how you, you sort of operate. Um, but just for this video, I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a sales quote in BC manually. So I'm going to go ahead and say, new and this will give me my new sales quote. Um, so first thing I'm going to do here on the sales quote is I'm going to add a customer. So let me just go ahead and say test customer one and sorry they are blocked for privacy so what I'm going to go ahead and do is just choose another customer. Here we go. Um, and once I've input um, the customer here, I can start inputting the lines area of my sales quote. Okay, so the idea is, is that um, we are sending out this quote to a uh, customer because they've requested some services um, and we're going to give them an idea of how much um, we're going to charge for these services or these products, whatever it is we may sell. Now, to keep things simple here, I've not used a, a sort of an item or a resource fixed asset or anything else as the line type. I've just used a general ledger code and it's just wiped out my line there. Sorry, so I'm gonna put in 10110. I'm gonna input a quantity of one and a unit price of a thousand, okay? So really simply, this is my finished sales quote, okay? So we input a customer name, We've input a GL account, a quantity, and a unit price. I can do things like start over typing the description. I can also start doing things like changing the dimensions that we have here as well, okay? So um, I guess for the purpose of this video is to show the end-to-end -end process. So we won't do that, um, but once uh, we're done with the sales quote, what we can do is go ahead and say make order, okay? So let's say uh, we've sent off the sales quote to the um, customer, so you can send by email or you can print or attach as PDF. Um, we'll say that we sent this off to the School of Fine Art and they um, approved the quote. They said, let's go ahead with the, uh, the sale that we're making to them for 1,000 euros here, okay? Um, and what I'm gonna do now then is just go ahead and say make order, okay? And uh, what this will do is it will say, um, do you want to convert the quote into an order? And I'm gonna say yes. And uh, here I've got another message saying the quote has been converted to order 101011. Do you want to open the new order? And I'm gonna say yes on that, okay? And what this does is it basically takes me to the newly created sales order, which is basically just a copy of the sales quote, okay? So as you'd expect, um, the GL account, the description, the quantity, the unit price, any dimensions and so on, as they were on the sales quote, will be copied across to the sales order, right? So um, that's the sales quote that the customer accepted. Um, so that's why it's copied everything across. And we do have the quote number field here on the sales order, just so we can tell which quote number this sales order originated from, okay? So we've got sort of that audit trail. And if you have um, the archiving of sales quotes activated, 
you would have uh, an archived version of that sales quote in the background there as well. Okay, so on a sales order, I guess there isn't really much more that we would do here, but it would depend on our business process. Okay, so um, you can come in here and you can start doing things like, uh, let me just find the um, shortcuts here. You can start doing things like creating warehouse shipments. You can create purchase orders. You can do a few things off the back of this sales order. Obviously, that depends on, as a business, how you guys operate. You know, do we need to do sort of material requirements planning? Do we need to do warehouse shipments? Do we need to, it's, it's just depends on how we work. But for the purposes of, uh, of this video, um, what we'll do is we're just gonna go ahead and process this sales order. Um, and we won't do any of those sub processes, but we will do other videos with those ones in there. Okay, so let's just say this sales order is good to go. I'm gonna come home here in the home group and I'm gonna say post and I'm gonna say ship and invoice, okay? Now, before I go ahead and do that, this is a one line sales order and you'll notice I have quantity to ship one, quantity shipped zero, quantity to invoice one and quantity invoiced zero, okay? So when I go ahead and ship and invoice, the order will be totally fulfilled. It will be completely fulfilled, right? If we had other lines on here, you could go ahead if you wanted to and modify the quantity to ship and quantity to invoice fields if you didn't want to fully complete this order, if you didn't want to fulfill this order, if you couldn't fulfill this order due to you know not having enough stock or whatever else, um, we could modify these fields as appropriate. But for now, let's go ahead and say post, and I'm gonna say ship and invoice, and okay. So what we get here now is uh, another message says, the order is posted as number 103243 and move to the posted sales invoices window. Do you wanna open the posted invoice? Okay, so I'm gonna say no on that one at the moment, and what I should show you here, guys, look, in the sales quote screen, 1003 is not there anymore. That was our sales quote. And if I come into my sales orders, and we can see on the bottom here, the last order, which was for our School of Fine Art um, order, that is not there anymore. So what I'm trying to get across here is that once the document is fully processed in Business Central, guys, the um, document is deleted. So. You can change BC um, to work in different ways there if you want to, um, but out of the box, they are removed. Um, and I guess I should say you can invoice orders in different ways, uh, which sometimes means that the order remains um, on the sales order screen even after you invoice. Um, but just be weary, guys, of that. And obviously make sure you test before um, deploying any sort of process changes in your environment. Okay, so now if I come into my posted sales invoices, um, I'm just gonna go to the last one, which is here, 103243 for School of Fine Art, it was 1,000 euros. That's the uh, invoice that we just generated. Um, and you can see here, we've got quote number 1,003 and also order number 101011. So it tells us, the full audit trail. And again, as I mentioned earlier, you can archive quotes um, when you process those. You can also archive orders when you process those as well. So it just depends, you know, how far um, you wanna go with the, um, the um, archiving. So on our posted sales invoice, um, we can review the uh, transaction, that the, the entries that we've made. You can see I've got the same line here that I had on my quote and my order, the same amounts, the same dimensions and so on. Um, and I should say that this is the first point in the process that um, general ledger entries are created, okay? So up until now, um, because it was a GL account line, um, no general ledger entries would have hit our general ledger up until this point where the invoice was generated. Okay, so from here, if I wanted to, I can print, I can email, I can attach as PDF uh, my posted sales invoice. 
and I can send a copy of that to my customer if I wanted to. Okay, so we've gone through from a sales quote, uh, which was 1003, to a sales order, which was 101011, through to a posted sales invoice, which is 103243. Okay, now if we go ahead and process the, uh, the payment, the cash part of this transaction, what I'll do is just go to our customer, so the School of Fine Art. Okay, so if I just use the shortcut here, go invoice and customer. I can come through to customer and ledger entries. And here up at the top, I can see our document. Okay, so I've got um, document number 103243. And this is the customer ledger entry screen. So I can see all of the, the details against this transaction. Okay, so I can see my dimensions, I can see the currency code. I can see the original amount. I can see the amount LCY, which is um, GBP in this case. And then I can see the remaining amount in foreign currency and the remaining amount in local currency as well. So I've also got other details here like the due date and other payment discounts and such that I can, uh, that I can, uh, uh, my customer sorry, can claim against this uh, particular invoice, okay? Now, key thing I wanted to show you on this screen here, guys, is the uh, remaining amount, which is 1,000 euros, okay? Um, and what I'll do now is just go through and process a payment for this particular invoice, okay? So in order to do this, I mean, we can do this a few different ways. Um, but I'm just going to show you a very simple way, uh, and that is by inputting a cash receipt journal. Okay, so if I go ahead and come into a cash receipt journal, I'm going to come in and say the document type is a payment, my account type is customer, my customer is 30,000, and then I'm going to go ahead and apply entry. So I'm going to apply this. Uh, payment line to the transaction which we just posted. Okay, so when I say apply entries, this is gonna bring up our invoice screen. And let me just unapply there. Um, and I can reorder the document number column there. And you see here, I've got my invoice uh, document number 103243. I can say set applies to ID and okay. And you see what that does is it brings through the amount of the invoice, which was 1,000 euros, and it was 645.80 um, GBP. Um, and then the other side of this transaction, I mean, here it's by default picked a GL account. Um, I mean, it doesn't really matter, it's just a demo, but I guess typically you would post this to a bank account, right? So um, you post the payment that the customer's making, into a bank account and um, that would then sit in the bank account for you to later go and reconcile um, and report on as you wish. Um, but just for now, I'm going to leave this as a GL account. Let's say post and let's say yes. And what will happen now is when I go back to the customer account, let's go School of Fine Art. Let's go customer and, sorry, customer and ledger entries. And over here, what you'll see is we've now got a payment line which sits on top of the original invoice line that we had. And if I scroll to the right here, you'll notice that the remaining amount on those last two entries is now zero. Okay, so the open tick box against those is also unpopulated now. So it basically means that those entries are now closed entries. They are allocated to each other. Um, how can I check and confirm that? Well, I can go either from the payment or the invoice, whichever way around I wanted to, click the assist edit or the three dots, and I can go in and say applied entries. And here it should show me that it's uh, payment GO2001 is applied to invoice 103243, okay? Um, and I guess we can do it in another video here, but I can go ahead and unapply and reapply transactions as well. 
Okay guys, so just to recap what we did there was we started with a sales quote, uh, we processed that and uh, turned it into a sales order, we processed the sales order into a sales invoice, and the sales invoice was, uh, was what we posted the payment against, and the payment is now applied to the invoice, okay? So that's the full end-to-end, -end, out of the box, sales uh, quote to cash process. Um, so it's really just to, to give you guys an idea of how that works end-to-end. -end. Uh, I hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.